Thanks, Richard, for the nice introduction. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, so we are interested in uh, making clean transportation fuels from natural gas, biomass, or even CO2 from the atmosphere. And one promising pathway is through syngas conversion. And we are looking into the catalyst that can convert syngas into higher oxygenates, for example, ethanol. So these higher oxygenates can be used as very high performance and also clean transportation fuels. And also they can be used as the basic chemical feedstocks for manufacturing consumer products. And rhodium-based catalyst is one of the major candidates. One very interesting and important factor is that the um, support material or uh, the promoters can actually largely determine the catalytic performance. So in heterogeneous catalysis, promoter refers to a substance added into the catalyst to improve its activity, selectivity, or lifetime. And for rhodium catalysts, by using different metal oxides as either the support material or the promoters, um, the, uh, the activity and selectivity can, uh, can be dramatically changed. Therefore, our research is focused on understanding how these metal oxide species influence the catalytic performance. We know that in heterogeneous catalysis, the surface properties are crucial. And also the interface between rhodium and these metal oxide species uh, could play a a critical role. Therefore, we want to uh, directly interact. Uh, th uh, therefore, we want to directly create such interface layers and control the surface properties. And we do that by using atomic layer deposition. So, atomic layer deposition is uh, is uh, is based on self-saturating layer by, by layer growth model. It can achieve very uniform coding with angstrom level control on high surface area substrates. So we uh, designed two models in order to study the effect uh, of manganese oxide in this case. In the first case, we deposit an ultra-thin layer of manganese oxide by ALD on the silicon oxide substrate. And then we deposit the rhodium nanoparticles. So in this case, the manganese oxide is a support modification layer. In the other case, we deposit rhodium nanoparticle first, and then deposit the ALD manganese oxide as an overcoat layer. Um, and uh, I should point out that in this catalyst, the rhodium nanoparticles are deposited by a wet chemistry technique called incipient wetness impregnation. And besides using ALD to modify the catalyst structure, we also use a conventional uh, method co-impregnation to incorporate these manganese promoters. The co-impregnation method is simply done by mixing the rhodium and manganese precursor together into the impregnation solution. This method is simple and effective. However, it doesn't have good control over how much manganese is mixed into the rhodium nanoparticles and how much manganese ends up on the nanoparticle surface. Also, the, uh, the nanoparticle size can, be, um, ca can usually be smaller from this co-impregnation method. And therefore, by using ALD, we're hoping to have less variables so that we can focus on the role of these metal oxides without changing other parameters, for example, the size of the nanoparticles or the porosity of the support. Then we uh, took all these different types of catalysts uh, to test in syngas conversion reaction. So this diagram shows the selectivity going into different products. Our desirable higher oxygenate product is shown in orange, and the methane shown in gray is the most competing byproduct, uh, which we want to minimize. With manganese oxide ALD as a support layer, um, it actually achieved the highest, pr uh, the highest production of higher oxygenates. Especially the most important parameter, selectivity, was significantly improved. In comparison, using manganese oxide as an overcoat layer um, was not as effective as the support layer. The selectivity improvement was much less. 
We also observed that actually the co-impregnation catalyst um, gave also pretty good activity and selectivity. Then we used different types of characterizations to understand how magnesium oxide functions in these different types of catalysts. First of all, we use TEM to characterize the nanoparticle size of rhodium. This is because by changing the nanoparticle size, um, we can change what types of surface sites are exposed. And different types of surface sites can have uh, different intrinsic activity and selectivity. Um, but it turns out that the manganese oxide support layer didn't change the size of rhodium nanoparticles compared to the unpromoted. So this is indicating that the manganese oxide mainly functions by forming the interface sites around the parameter where rhodium nanoparticles are anchored. In comparison, the co-impregnation catalyst uh, results in much smaller nanoparticle size, and this is not surprising because the two precursors were mixed together during the synthesis, so it's very likely that the uh, two species are uh, highly intermixed. From the uh, reaction results, we know that the manganese oxide overcoat layer was not as effective as the support layer. However, it's usually hypothesized that the manganese species present on the rhodium nanoparticle surface should be responsible for the promotion effect. So we were wondering why when we directly deposit manganese oxide on the catalyst surface, the results weren't quite good. Performing XPS, we noticed that after the catalyst absorbs CO, the surface manganese signal largely decreased. Therefore, this is telling us that the manganese oxide overcoat layer is not stable upon CO absorption. Therefore, the promotion effect was not effective. Then we looked into how the carbon monoxide interacts with the catalyst surface using infrared spectroscopy. The most intense peak is CO binds to uh, one rhodium atom. And another major peak occurring around 1900 wave number is the bridged peak where CO binds to two or more rhodium atoms. So this bridged peak indicates the presence of extended rhodium surface. With manganese oxide as a support layer, we, uh, besides this regular bridge peak, we also saw another peak showing up um, at much lower wave number, um, around 1700 uh, wave number in this case. So this peak uh, is commonly assigned to, ro uh, assigned to CO binds to the interface between rhodium and manganese. Since the manganese cation is oxophilic, so it helps pull apart the CO bond and therefore increase the activity. So uh, this feature um, suggests that we effectively form interface sites between rhodium and the manganese oxide support without disrupting the extended rhodium surface. Well, on the catalyst with manganese oxide as an overcoat layer, the formation of such interface sites was not um, obvious, um, again, due to the instability of manganese oxide uh, overcoat layer upon CO absorption. For the co-impregnation catalyst, actually, we saw a lot of um, formation of such interface sites. However, the signal from the extended rhodium surface largely diminished, and this picture actually agrees pretty well with the results from TEM uh, showing much smaller nanoparticle size um, due to the highly intermixing between rhodium and the manganese. And besides the, uh, improve, uh, besides the improved activity from this manganese oxide support layer, we also saw um, enhanced selectivity towards the higher oxygenates. And there could be two uh, main reasons. One is that during impregnation of the rhodium nanoparticles, some trace amount of manganese species could be transferred onto the nanoparticle surface. 
and such species uh, should preferentially stay on the stepped or defect sites of the nanoparticles, since these kind of sites are highly active to make methane. So this site blockage, or um, site blockage and deactivation can bring down the methane production. Another reason would be the manganese oxide uh, could change the reaction energetics. Through uh, collaboration with Professor Jens Norskov's group on density functional theory calculation, we found that manganese oxide present on the rhodium surface could stabilize the key transition state towards higher oxygen synthesis, but it doesn't really affect the methane synthesis. Therefore, around the interface between manganese oxide and rhodium, the selectivity towards higher oxygenates could be improved. So in conclusion, by controlling the rhodium catalyst structure using atomic layer deposition, we identified that the rhodium manganese oxide interface sites is responsible um, for improved higher oxygen production. Um, and we are also very excited to apply similar strategy to study more heterogeneous catalysis systems that are very important for the chemical industry and energy conversion. With that, I'd like to thank my advisor, Professor Stacy Bent, all the bank group members, and also the fundamental insights provided by Professor Norskov's Norsk uh, group. And also, we want to thank the financial support provided by GSAP. Thank you all for listening. I'd be happy to take questions. We have time for two or three minutes of questions, if anyone has any questions. Over here, yes. Hello, thank you for that very interesting talk. Um, manganese and oxygen form at least 30 known binary compounds uh, from manganese 2 up to manganese 7. Um, and uh, some of the common ones you, you might be forming are manganese oxide with manganese 2 or Bixbyite MN203 or Hausmannite MN304 and others uh, which are commonly accessible. They have very different reactivity and also transfer reactions. Um, and so do you um, actually know what compound you have formed, and is that relevant to the catalysis you're seeing? Yeah, um, that's a very good point. So uh, from atomic layer deposition, the uh, manganese oxide uh, comes out to be 2 plus. And so, so we actually didn't uh, have a, uh, we haven't performed any you know, uh, operando characterization to look at the manganese oxidation state under reaction condition. Um, but uh, from the literature, it's, um, there, there's uh, enough evidence showing that manganese should stay at two plus under reaction condition. Um, although some group did um, predict, uh, uh, did use um, some calculation to show that it could be possible to form um, rhodium and manganese metallic alloy but we don't believe that's the case here. So it will mostly stay as um, oxidized, probably two plus, but we haven't done any in situ characterization. Okay, well, actually the time is up. So let's thank Noya one more time. Thank you, Noya. Thank you.